Hey, everybody. So, let me get rid of this. I don't need to monitor this. You can hear me? Well, let me check one thing just to make sure. Because I've been having trouble with OBS not remembering to grab audio. So, just going to check something really quick coming attractions of uh, what we're going to put together. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll see if we can hear it. It appears the audio is working. So that's what we're going to build today. Um, let me close this and get rid of the headphones so I don't hear my echo. Ugh. All right. Oh, I want to show something off here. I've got some cool swag that I've been getting from people. And uh, needed some place to display it. So I got this little uh, board that I put together so I can put, put all this stuff up. It's pinned to the board because I don't want to uh, apply the stickers. But anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. Let me turn the fan off. <clears throat> So, hey, Joe, glad you could show up and you can hear me. That's always good. Well, you know, it's as good as it gets anyway. Nice swag board. Yeah, um, kind of threw that together this morning from some, uh, you know, a, a board that we had. Uh, wouldn't take push pins. It was some other kind of arrangement. So I replaced the backboard with something that uh, was some foam core. You know board and put some fabric over it and glued it down and anyway i can't do something simple i have to do <laughs> always do something more complicated but i think it turned out nice anyway so let's talk about this so joe had asked for and i don't want to give away your uh your idea um or say too much about it, but he asked for something that could do a slideshow that would repeat frames, um, you know, on HyperCard, and wanted to know, you know, how you go about building something like that. Asked if he should watch the instructional videos I've been putting out. Well, unfortunately, this requires more than uh, what I've got recorded on videos, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to actually just sit down, let's open HyperCard up and build it. So um, instead of just walking through what I've already put together, we're going to create it from scratch using the resources we have available. Uh, sorry, I got to rearrange some things. I really need to get a dual monitor set up going here because it's getting difficult to stay on top of things here. So because I've got OBS and, and YouTube running and then of course I got the screen capture and anyway I really should have a dual monitor set up and I don't all right enough of that so uh, you want to create a hypercard stack you're gonna need and you want to do a slideshow so you're probably gonna have some art that you need I am NOT a graphic designer not even close um, I did some really crude drawing but there's tools that you can use to to pull images in from you know the internet or something like that and bring them onto your um, your classic uh, classic Mac. So typically, what I use uh, whoop, this is not going to show it to you, uh, and we know the sound works, so I can close that. So if you're trying to assemble your materials, 
um, I will use GIF Converter. Um, and GIF Converter will take a GIF, um, it'll take a, um, uh, a picked document, or you can, you know, use a JPEG or anything like that, and then can, you know, bring it into your Mac if you want to, or you could edit it in Windows or something like that to make it a smaller black and white graphic or something. But anyway, I just pull it into the Mac. GIF Converter seems to be able to handle it okay. Get the big image, scale it to the way you want it, um, you know, copy and paste, whatever you're going to do, and then you can use that in your HyperCard stack. Um, or you can freehand draw in HyperCard, and you'll see some of that today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so GIF Converter, you can get it from uh, Macintosh Garden. You know, it's it's easy to download and install. It does ask for a um, license, so when you try to quit the program, it'll say, oh, you need to register and all that, but you could just skip through that. Um, I haven't been able to find a registration for it yet. Um, oh, let's see who we got online. So, who we got watching? Joe, of course, is here from Joe's Computer Museum. And, hey, Garth. Garth Beagle is here. And uh, Spirit Walker adventures yeah it's eric so uh have been streaming too much lately but i'm trying to get back into it uh okay so i've got three keyboards and two mice so uh graphics converter oh is that what it is i thought it was gif converter uh let me start it up so that i where did i put it It's not here. Where did I put that thing? Well, there's the installer for it, but that's not. Maybe. I don't have it installed on this computer, and I have to install it. Anyway, I'm not really going to do that right now. Um, because we don't really need it. Not for this. Yeah, so I guess it is graphics. Let's run the installer. What the heck? Continue. Easy install. Sure, let's just install it. Why not? Quit. Here it is. That's GIF converter. About GIF converter. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Yeah, it doesn't say graphics converter. It says GIF converter. Anyway, it's what I've been using. So, um, but it, it does some basic stuff. Um, yeah. Don't really want to go too far into this, but let's open something up. Oh, gosh, do I have any graphics on here? Desktop, apps, development, projects, hey, there's some art here. Okay, so here's some pics. Here's a PNG. Um, so this is the Marchintosh logo. It's reading it. So, you know, it handles color and all that. Um, you can, this is 640 by 480. So you can do things like you can change the size or the scale. You can rotate. Uh, you can change your palette. You know, it's got the usual uh, things in it. Well, it looks like you can do some dithering. Anyway, um, it seems to cover what I need. At least so far. All right. So we're going to start up HyperCard. So 
Now I use HyperCard 2.4. It was the last, you know, official release of it. Should probably do a shortcut on my desktop for that. An alias, I mean. Uh, oh, Adam's here. Hello, Adam. This is um, Mac OS uh, 7.6.1. All your internet service is out. Oh, that, I, I have a sad for you. Okay. So, anyway, fired up HyperCard. It takes you to the home stack. The home stack has a whole bunch of stuff in it. And, you know, I've gone through that um, before. But basically, um, you know, it's it doesn't really have a lot of animation or anything. Did you plug that G4 into your network? <laughs> So your G4 is taking down your internet. <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, so what you want to do is do file new stack. And there's several things you can do. You can, we're going to do classic because we're going to target a classic Macintosh. Uh, HyperCard will do a full screen card for that. Um, and there are commands you can do to like hide the menu and, and things so that it could be like a kiosk. Um, you could also target a power book, which is uh, what, 640 by 400 or something like that. Uh, you got large, you can also do a custom thing. Uh, the custom thing, you just drag the, uh, the icon here. You can go as low as 64 by 64 and do some kind of a widget. Right, but we're going to go with classic. All right. Stack name. Well, let's first let's set the directory. So I want to go into development. Projects. Oh, actually, I think I, I put something. Did I put it up here or is it in projects? Oh, yeah. Slideshow. And we're going to create, uh, well, and get the right keyboard, Joe's slide show. Save. All right. Presents you with a completely clear, empty screen. And it does nothing. It has no scripts behind it. There's just one card. Uh, HyperCard is a series of cards in a stack. Um, so we're going to need a couple of things here. I've got my reference computer here so that I can remember how I built the darn thing. So let me get that started up. No, I don't want to do that. I didn't write up any notes or a script for this. So, um, one of the things that, uh, I asked Joe for some requirements and, uh, one of the things he said is I want to be able to control the speed of it. Um, I'm not sure this is going to work exactly the way that he would like it to. If he keeps the, um, the, the cards very simple and doesn't try to do any animation or anything, then the speed will work just fine. I've gone, of course I embellished it. I've got a little bit of animation in here. Um, I also have some sounds, so you have to kind of time things out for that to work properly. Uh, sound playing in HyperCard is asynchronous, so you can start off the sound and then move on to do other things, which is handy. So um, let's, uh, first thing we're going to do is the very first card on this is going to be a card that uh, is a control panel, and it wouldn't be part of the normal presentation. Uh, one bit fever dreams you're spooked. Yeah. Uh, Garth. I would have been so much all into HyperCard if I'd known about it back in the day. Yeah, I was fortunate. Um, when I was in college, I worked for uh, the geology department uh, because they were the first department at the college that had computers. So they had the computer labs. 
and um, also the uh, the academic computer repair. You know, we installed software like WordStar uh, for uh, departments and things. We also repaired Macs. So um, I broke my first uh, um, um, CRT fixing a Mac there. So that that was fun. Um, anyway, uh, so we used to service them and. Um, I spent a lot of time in the labs, and we had a uh, an Apple lab that had a laser printer, and um, I think they were uh, pluses. They were mostly Mac pluses. Um, but HyperCard was available to us. You could borrow the disk, and of course all of us copied the disks anyway. But um, So I taught myself HyperCard, you know, mostly while I was supposed to be fixing machines in the lab, but whatever. So, oh, hi, Rudy. Glad you could join us. All right, so anyway, we got this brand spanking new card, HyperCard stack, and it's got nothing in it. So um, let's create our control panel. So one of the things you can do is you can peel off these uh, pallet uh, controls. Makes it a little easier. This is one of the reasons why I like using... Um, a uh, larger format screen uh, a resolution screen so that you can you have some room to work on things you can edit these on a classic Mac and and I've done that but then you end up with this is full size usually and then you got this laying on top of it and it gets a little awkward using the tools anyway so first thing we're going to do uh, this the hand is the browse tool this is what users would use when they're doing it there's a button tool and then fields. We're going to create a field. So you hold the can key down and drag. And you create a text field that way. Double click on it and we can mess with the properties. Uh, we're going to use this as a label so we're not going to worry about it. Um, and I'm going to leave it transparent. I'm not going to change any of the properties. We're going to uh, select Control C, Control V, hold down the Shift key, and of course it didn't work. Oh, nope, I still I didn't create one. All right. Oh, there it is. Holding the Shift key down while you drag is supposed to keep it either horizontal or vertical, but of course I messed that up. I probably went too fast. All right. Sorry, I'm really retentive about this. Um, there are uh, add-ons where you can control, you can multiple, you can select multiple fields and have them align them and things like that. But I try to use just a plain Jane HyperCard without any enhancements. So, so we're going to have a label here, and this one is going to be our actual value, and we're going to put the speed in. No auto alignment. Yeah. Well, there is a um, tools, uh, I think, isn't there a grid tools edit? No, I guess there is. I thought there was a grid alignment. I must be thinking of something else. Anyway. You hit the browser icon, you can see I can't see the fields, but you know they're there. So we're gonna say speed, oop, speed, and switch back to the field tool. And we're gonna call this one speed. And we're gonna make it a rectangle so that you can see it. So now if we switch back to the browser, there you go, you got a label in a field. And this is longer than we need. There. All right. So what else do we need? We need a button so that we can start the program. I'm going to make a giant button. Yeah, sorry. The default settings for buttons are like transparent, or the controls. 
So we're going to do a round rectangle. Actually, we could do the default button. Nah. I like the round rectangle. Okay. And we're going to call this one. Now, the name of the button is also what is displayed when you show the name. Um, I, it's a little awkward. It really should have a label. And then the button name could be something you refer to programmatically instead but that's not how it works so run and then um, I'm gonna add well let's start we'll do it later so we got a run button you can fiddle with the text style and we could make it um, you know like Helvetica or Geneva or something different you could even do symbols of course that makes no sense we can make it bold. We can make it shadowed. And you can outline it. And you can make it big. And you can center it. There. There's our run button. All right. Now, go back to the browse tool. You can click the button, doesn't do anything. Nothing's happening. Now, this field. Um, I'll explain the value we're putting in there. Um, you can control uh, the timeout, the wait function, with either ticks, which is uh, approximately a 60th of a second, or you could define seconds. So to give Joe more control over this, we're going to use ticks. So 120 gives us a two second, approximately two seconds. Um, okay, well... We've got something that still doesn't do anything. Let's add another card now that we have the first card that controls things. So, have to run for a bit. Be right back. Yeah, you won't miss much. It's going to take a while to do this uh, <laughs> live stream. Or Visual Studio. Cringe. Um, I spent most of my career in the Microsoft stack. Um, yeah. Yeah. PowerPoint, yeah, you can think of HyperCard as kind of like a, a PowerPoint. There actually is a version, uh, the first version of PowerPoint was available for the Macintosh. So you could, uh, you could use PowerPoint. Yeah, it's, I'd say it's closer to Visual Studio. You know, drag and drop your controls, code behind the controls kind of an environment. All right, so let's file. We, whoop, not file, edit, new card. All right, drops a new card in after the card you're on. Um, now, I'm going to give away some of Joe's uh, intended purpose for this. It is a Halloween stack. So um, we're going to paint the background in black so that it's dark. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way, but that's what I'm going to do. You could set, you know, pick patterns and do, you know, like grays or something like that. Eric, can I tell you spent, I can tell you spent a lot of, a bunch of time in Microsoft land because you closed app windows instead of quitting the app. You aren't running there by wasting memory. <laughs> that is true. Uh, yeah, look at this. GIF converter. Still running. Quit. Good point. Yeah, I gave it away. It's it's for the pumpkin tosh. So, I don't know if Joe was actually keeping secrets, but anyway. So the whole idea is to do the pumpkin tosh. All right, so we got uh, two screens now. One is black. What are we going to do with it? Um, what did I do with the other one? Hang on. So if I go... No, that's the last one. Three. Oh, I remember what I did. Okay. So it's nighttime. Uh, let's, let's just leave this slide the way it is since we're animating the stack. Yeah, the booberry tosh. Yeah, you need to do booberry on the on the front of it. Um, 
So we're going to insert yet again another card. And on this one, uh, this is where uh, my daughter really laughed at my uh, graphic skills. Um, I drew a pumpkin. It's the god awfulest worst pumpkin ever, but in, in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and pull it in from the other stack. So you can so it's not here. It's in Joe's slideshow. Oops. Didn't want to do that. In fact, I should select the browse tool so I don't accidentally do stuff. It's not under apps. Where the heck did I put it? Oh, here it is. So I'm going to steal a bit, little bit of stuff here. Um, so the, <laughs> here's my, uh, my pumpkin. And it's a very realistic pumpkin because it's warped and uh, it's not perfectly round and it, it's a demented pumpkin. So um, one of the neat things you can do is you, you can double click the, uh, the select tool and it will select the entire window. Control C to copy. Uh, and we can switch back. You can have multiple stacks open at the same time. Control V. All right, so I put this in uh, Joe's slideshow. All right. Um, yeah, that's a creepy guy. Unreal Engine Five level pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, my my daughter um, uh, was into graphic design. She was planning on doing it for college, and then she found out she doesn't like people telling her how to do art. Oh yeah, Command C, not Control C. Still stuck in Windows land. Sorry, the the terminology to me is is uh, is different. So uh, yes, Command C, not Control C. Um, anyway, she saw this and she just went, "Oh yeah, it's so bad, it's good." Yeah, <laughs> it does look like the Brox candy, you know, the ones that have been warped and uh, melted. That's a good one. Okay, so where was I? So we've got a couple of screens here. Um, command 2 takes you to the prior screen. Command 3 takes you to the next screen. Command 1 takes you to the first screen. So, so we've got something here that we could actually animate. So why don't we do that? Let's switch to the button control. Double click on the button and then go to the script button. Now we are looking at the HyperCard script for that button. Uh, it defaults to having a mouse up event because that's how you normally trigger a button. So let me get back to my reference stack here. And like I said, I, I didn't script this out or I'd, I'd have all these in notes and I'd just be able to rattle it off. All right, so the first thing we want to do, um, we have a field on the card that gives you the speed that you want to use it. Um, to make it easy to use, you want to put that into a variable instead of having to refer to the card field contents all the time. So you want to put card field speed into, and I use the to, to identify a variable like that so I don't confuse it with the uh, card name. Or the, the other nice thing is that if you use the or, you know, prefix it with Hungarian notation where you, you know, uh, I is an integer, um, S is a string, C is a character, or that kind of thing, uh, it, it allows you to avoid uh, keywords so that you're not confusing uh, the uh, send the the uh, the runtime library with oh you're trying to use a keyword here. Um, now Adam, that's my pet peeve about switching between Win and Mac. I sit here there on my Mac hitting Control V. Yeah, I've done that a lot too, wondering why it won't paste. 
get an adapter to plug in an IBM Model M keyboard. Yeah, I'm. I don't want us to have a clacky, clacky, loud keyboard as much as I would love to do that. I think it would. Uh, I'd give myself a headache. So, all right. So anyway, so we're going to put card field speed, so it knows you're talking about the contents of it, into the speed. Um, you don't declare variables. You only declare globals. And we're only going to have the code in this one mouse up of, uh, event, so we don't have to deal with it. Now, um, so the next thing we want to do is go to card two. You can label the cards. They could have names. So I could go to go to card name. Um, but I'm keeping this very simple. We just want to go to the second card. Um, now, for each of these, we. we if you just went from card to card, and this is how you do the animation, it would just speed right through them based on the speed of your computer. And, you know, that wouldn't work very well. So we want to use the wait command to wait the speed number of ticks. So that's how, how that works. If you were doing seconds, you would do wait for the speed seconds. And it would accept that. But we're doing ticks, so let's get rid of that. And then the next thing we want to do is um, set up a, a visual effect. Um, so before we go to card two, you can do a visual effect so that when you transition cards, it'll, it'll do different things. And we're going to dissolve slowly and, and then go to the second card. Okay. So that's pretty much it for that card. Um, oh, this, the third card is the pumpkin. Dissolving slowly the black's not going to do much. So let's do that for the third card. Um, you notice that the, the alignment's goofy. If you hit the tab key, it re... Um, you know, repositions all the text. So we're going to go to card two. We're going to wait for, uh, you know, two seconds before we go to the next card. And then we're going to do a visual effect dissolve slow. Go to card three. Then we're going to wait for the speed ticks. So this is a very repetitive um, thing. Um, we don't have a card four, so if I tried to go to card four, it, four, it would just ignore the command. Um, and then, you know, that's basically it. Um, let's, at the end of it, go to card one. So it's going to take you back to the, uh, the start card. All right, so let's give this a try and see what happens. Go back to the Browse tool, click Run. There. That's not very exciting, is it? It didn't really do the dissolve. Let me make sure I did that right. Some commands, if you do them incorrectly, it'll err. Other commands, it just ignores it. Visual effect. Dissolve. Slow. Yeah, it should work. And that sets it up for going to card three. Anyway, we'll worry about it later. All right, so let's go add some more cards. So this first card... Second, oh, I've got the card order wrong. So that's, that's the first card. That's the second card. This is the third card. So we can cut this card. 
go to the first card, edit, paste card. So if I go to the first card, go to the second card, go to the third card. Oh, okay. All right. So that, that I goofed. I had the cards in the wrong order. Run. Man, it's still not doing a dissolve. Yeah, we'll figure it out. 10 print. Wrong! Go to 10. Yeah. I hate basic. It was the first language I learned, but I really hate basic. Um... Go to is great. I mean, there are times when it makes sense, but uh, not very many. Um, one bit fever dreams. I have a Unicomp Model M recreation USB from Unicomp. The thing is awesome. You know, I had an IBM, uh, whatever, Model M keyboard years and years ago and threw it away. Silly me. So my drive, you know, daily keyboard is this really cheap $15 keyboard. And you'll notice it doesn't have uh, numeric keys on it because I hate keyboards that are long. I don't use the numeric keys. I learned how to type on a typewriter and uh, well, running on reserve battery. Ooh, I thought I'd plug that in. You know, I'm really happy with this uh, iBook I got. Um, the battery actually lasts about an hour. Considering it's a 20-year-old battery, that's not too bad. All right, plugged in. All right, so we're good there. Sorry, getting back to, what was I talking about? Uh, <laughs> if user dollar equals Eric and... Anyway, I like short keyboards without number pads. Uh, number pads are for losers or data entry people. Um, I don't type that fast. So, anyway. All right. So, we got it. So, it does a blank, black screen, and then it goes to a pumpkin that is poorly drawn. What's next? So, let's go here. And... We're going to add another thing. Excuse me while I look at my reference. Oh, yeah. So I'd like to, and I'm just going to freehand draw this. Um, so we go to the first one, go to the second. Second, third, edit. New card. Gonna fill this one with black again. Um, gonna use the line to, or the pencil tool. If you double click on it, you get fat bits. It's like a zoomed in view. We don't really need that. Maybe I should use the line tool, that'd be better. Uh, there's different patterns you can do for tools. We want it white, uh, line size, let's do a nice heavy line, and you hold down the option key, anybody guess what this is? An upside down tree. This is getting too scary. Yeah, watching me code is very scary. You should be afraid. Be very afraid. I consider myself a average computer programmer. I mean, I got a lot of experience. I've made a lot of mistakes and learned from them, but I'm not, you know, the universe's gift to uh, computer science. I'll, I'll give you that. But, um, but I really did enjoy programming um, until I got into management. And now people are my problem that I try to solve. 
cracked glass. Yeah, it does kind of look like cracked crack glass, doesn't it? All right, so um, this is lightning. And what follows lightning? A slower car. Thunder, right? So let's do this. Um, You got lightning, and then you need thunder after the lightning, because there's a certain delay, right? Um, oh, what else does lightning do? Uh, lightning flashes. So let's do, let's make this flash. So if we, screw up. Oops, sorry, I'm looking at my reference again. All right, so we need to go back to our very simple program that we're using, which is on the first screen. Use the button tool, get in here, go to the script. Um, okay, so we went to, we're not gonna go to card one yet. We're on card three. Let's add some comments here. Uh, Card one, card one is the uh, control card, right? Card two is the black screen. Card three is the demented uh, is that how you spell demented? I don't know. Scary. Spooky. Pump. Again. Card four is uh, flash. So we're going to, uh, no visual effects. We're just going to go to card four. And we need to do something that does flash of some kind. So um, you can use the painting tools to uh, select everything and invert it. Oh, comments. Let's see what we got here. Uh, got to go back to... Oh, talking about Zork. Yeah, um, there are hypercard stacks that implement... Uh, I don't know if they implement the Zork engine that's that's uh, historically used, but there's definitely hypercard stacks that are basically Zork, or uh, you know, uh, what do you call that? Interactive fiction kind of things too. So um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, um, and I haven't gotten to it yet, but um, archive.org has. Um, thousands of hypercard stacks with lots of resources in them so if you need anything or if there's a game or something i think uh um gruz did some reviews of some hypercard stacks and some games and things there's some pretty good ones in there um, there's a lot of really crappy stuff that was built by people like me um, actually if you go to archive.org and look at the hypercard stacks um, my uh, wordle game uh, shows up uh, in the in the uh, first page so it's it's starting to get some views so that's cool anyway so we need a we need something that will do flashing now you might want to you could just drop the code right in here to do it but um, it's a it's something that you might want to reuse for another effect so we're going to actually create a uh, I'm not going to do a function uh, a function typically takes parameters and it always returns a value um, hyper talk which is the language in hypercard you can also use apple script i've never done that um, but hyper talk has a message handler infrastructure do flash. So we're going to create a message handler to handle a flash message. 
and I call my message handlers do because they take action. So the the um, syntax for it is on do or on do whatever. So on function name. Um, so let's do. You have to use the paint tools. Um, I just reset the paint tools before I start using them, just in case for some reason um, they're being used. And then you choose the um, select tool. So you can execute menu commands, basically. You can ch um, do menu invert so that's executing a menu command oops I wanted to do this ah sorry do menu select all we want to select the entire screen then we want to repeat because the flat we want it to flash multiple times times you want to wait for 10 ticks so we're going to wait a little bit between flashes otherwise it, on some machines it would go too fast uh, and this is something you might have to tweak on depending on where you're running it do menu invert so we're going to invert the screen and repeat so that we're going to do that eight times and we're going to wait 10 uh, tenths of a second in between each one. And then do inert. Boy, I was really typing the wrong thing there. Uh, reset paint and choose the browse tool. So what we're doing here is we're going to reset paint so that we know exactly what the state of the paint controls are. Controls are. We're going to choose the select tool. We're going to select all. And then eight times we're going to repeat waiting 10 ticks and then do an invert. So when you do that, oh, then when we're done, we're going to reset the paint again and choose the browse tool. So we're back to the way we expected to do it. So we need to call this and you um, do that you send a message how do you send a message oh yeah do flash Oop. fingers on wrong keyboard so think of it like a go sub but you're sending the message do flash and then hyper uh, card hyper talk looks to see where that message handler is. So that's how it recognizes. If it were a function, it would be this, empty, or you could do parameters after it. You could also do messages with parameters. Anyway, and then uh, the syntax for function is function instead of on. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Lemonade stand. You know, one of the things I'd like to do uh, eventually is do some hypercard stacks that take take uh, take advantage of networking, so that you could do multi-user games. So that, that would be fun to do. Okay, so what we got so far? So it'll do a flash, and then go back to card one. Let's see if it works. browser tool hit the button a little slow but it worked okay so maybe uh, may we tweak that a little bit oh why did I do that I closed the stack All right, 
So let's let's tweak that a little bit. I'm double clicking. Why do I do that? All right. So let's do um, let's do six instead of ten ticks and see how it behaves. Save. Browser tool. Run. Show the pumpkin. It's a little slow, but it's not bad. So we'll just leave it like that. All right. So we got lightning and it flashes. So we will insert a new card. And fill this with black again. And this time, go back to the first card button. We are going to, we're going to have it actually play a thunder sound. So I need to go to the next card. Card five is thunder. So go to card five. Play is the command for sound. And we're going to play thunder. Um, part of the problem here is that how is Hypercard going to know what thunder is? There is no sound resource called Thunder that's part of the HyperCard stack. There is a harpsichord and a couple of other things that come in HyperCard. And when you play an audio file, it actually searches through your current stack and then back up to the home card to find it, or a home stack to find it. But we don't have a Thunder thing. So uh, what I did, and I'm going to briefly switch here to a different view if I can find it so the hypercard stacks in uh, the Internet Archive so archive.org um, you can look at just the stacks I searched for sound and um, so there's a whole bunch of sound effects stacks. There's there's this one that's got some sound effects in it and things like that. Um, there's one in particular that I found. Uh, let's see if I can remember where it was. Uh, oh, wrong keyboard again. And it didn't find it. How did I find that? Uh, Do, do, do. What was it called? Maybe that'll help. Yeah, it was Adams. Anyway, not going to worry about it. I just want to show you how to download these. So if you, you know, you find a hypercard stack that you want to get, what you do is go to the show all on here. There'll usually be a sit file. Um, there might be a self-extracting archive, uh, C, S, E, A. Um, or you might find another bit or uh, like a disk image or something like that. You could download that and then extract the uh, what you need from it. So I found something that was an Adams family thing that had some sounds effects in it, um, one of which was Thunder. So I went ahead and downloaded that stack. Now, how do you get um, resources like that? You know, because it's stored in a resource fork, you, you would think you could use ResEdit or something like that to grab it, but actually, um, you don't want to stack a bunch of resources inside a hypercard stack. You do have to do it with sounds because there is no, no other way of managing it. 
uh, unless there's like an external command or something you know an xcmd or something you can use that manages sound stacks but in just classic hypercard what you do is you go to the home stack so let's uh let's close this um That's fine if that's open. So we're going to go home. So if you use go and then home, it takes you to the home stack. There is um, under the stack kit, power tools. And under power tools, there is resource mover. And the resource mover allows you to take resources from one stack to another. Now, I downloaded that Adams Family stack a while ago. I'm going to open it. Okay, there's all the resources. So there's an icon, there's sounds, there's... Uh, it's just one icon and some sounds. And then I'm going to open our target stack, which is Joe's slideshow. Okay. Uh, ooh, I'm not showing the right screen. Sorry. Totally forgot what I was doing here. <sighs> All right. So anyway, in HyperCard, there is... Let me go back. Uh, go back to home. Eh, sorry about that. Oh, see you, Rudy. All right, so you go to the home stack. Under the stack kit is something called Power Tools. In Power Tools, there's a resource mover. You open the source stack. So I downloaded the Adams Family thing. Open. There we go. And then we're going to open our target stack, Joe Slideshow. Open. And you see there's no resources in here at all. Um, we're going to take a couple of them here. I only want to do this once, so I'm going to copy the old lady. I'm going to copy Thunder. And I'm going to copy the wolf. over there close close go home now just to be sure everything's kosher I'm gonna quit hypercard I'm gonna open Joe's slideshow back up la 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 I just demonetized myself, didn't I? <laughs> All right. Um, under the edit menu is audio. And they have a little tool that you can use here that um, allows you to do audio. <laughs> it reminds me of the old font DA mover. Um, honestly, that's what I'm used to using is the old, <laughs> the old tools. Um, I learned uh, Mac OS, I think, on 3. Um, Back in, it would have been um, 97, 98. And then I didn't touch a Mac again until I got my uh, MacBook um, in 2010. So there was a long uh, delay. Anyway, if you look, there's a how are you that that is in here. Um, that's just part of the stack. And if you play that, how are you today? Hopefully you guys heard that. Let me see if I can monitor. How are you today? Yeah, I think it's probably working. There you are. Okay. Sorry, delay. So I wasn't sure it was working. Um, 
You can also do a new one where you record it yourself. Um, I don't, does it, yeah, I think this laptop's got a mic in it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, you can also, um, you know, use the ones that you brought into the app. Oh, how are you today? Yeah, so it did work. I hope the volume was high enough for you guys to, to um, get it. But then, you know, there's this one, which is Thunder. Okay. If you save it, um, it'll actually put a button on top of your stack. It'll ask you, replace Sound Thunder in current stack. Anyway, it throws a button on your stack that will play the sound. So, I think I just clicked it and played it. To move your button, hold down the option key and drag. So, it, and it gives you some advice on how to do this. So, we're going to pull the tools off, though. Button. Okay. And if you look at the script to this... You change the beep on your Mac 128 to a foghorn. Yeah, I've got a, um, gosh, where is it? Uh, I uploaded it to, uh, to uh, um, Macintosh um, Garden. Ah, here it is. So this came with the plus that um, somebody gave me. And it's the Star Trek sound effects uh, from the original series. So it's pretty cool. And in there you can do things like, you know, if you, if you eject a disc, the shield doors open. You know, that kind of thing. So, But anyway, so the, the code for this is rather complex. It's got, um, I haven't really looked at it that much but um, it's you know of course on the mouse up it it puts the uh, the name into a variable and it uses the I guess that's where I got it from um, and if the command key is down it does something it's got a bunch of you know brings up audio help when the mouse is down and the option key is down it does different things um, and then there's a delete thing so they added a script to it so that people who don't know how to program can do things with it. Um, we don't really need this button, so I'm just going to delete it. What we are going to do, however, is play it. And I already added the code. So you just do play in the name of the resource in uh, double quotes. Um, I think you can do it without the quotes. If there's a space in the name, you probably need it. I think HyperCard's pretty good about trying to pick up and figure out what you're doing, but um, anyway. So it'll play fun Thunder as soon as it goes to card five. Let's try it and see if it works. So. Use the browse tool, click the button. And you see it's asynchronous. It, it's playing the sound and leaving and going back to the first card. So And I hate listening to myself talk. Um, all right, so it works. Let's go back into the script. All right, so card six is more thunder. I'm not going to go through doing that, but that's what I did in the original stack. So you got flash thunder, black, and then flash lightning thunder again. Uh, to do. Uh, what else? Um, I did something with the pumpkin. So. 
So let, it's card six again because I don't want to I don't want to mess up the count here. Card six um, is a uh, spooky pumpkin. Alright, so go to card six. Oh, yeah, we want to do some delays in here. So, so we should wait after doing the thunder so that it doesn't um, immediately leave. So we'll wait for the speed ticks. I could have copied and pasted. I don't know if we're going to do it there, but before we go back to card one, let's do that too. All right. So on card six, what we're going to do is a little bit of animation. Two, three, four, five, and we don't have a six yet, so we have to add card six. So um, I'm going to copy some cards from the other stack. I think it'll be easier than uh, having you guys watch me painfully do graphics. So let's open up my old slideshow. So yeah, a couple of things of thunder. I've got my scary pumpkin. So we're going to select it. Control, not control, command C. Go over to Joe's slideshow. We're gonna. Oh, actually. Instead of going to the effort to copy the picture, let's do this. You can also edit and copy a card. So, and paste a card. There. So we had our lightning, our thunder, we've got the scary pumpkin face with the scary graphics. And then I do, I'm going to do a couple of frames of animation. So let's edit, copy this card. And you can, you can just paste it as well. So I could do Command V. Uh, next card, edit, copy card. So it doesn't assume you want to copy the card. It actually, you, the, because there's different copies you could do. But for paste, it knows what is in the buffer. So you can handle that. Okay, grab another. Edit. Copy card. So you can see where I'm going here. Edit, copy card. So you could take different elements of other stacks and, and put, them, put them together to build your own custom. So there's our animation. I'm just switching between cards. All right, so. We need to go back to the first card. Select the button tool. Go into the script for the run button. Card six. Uh, play uh, old, what was it, old lady? 
can see you can't do this inside the script editor. You have to go out, edit, audio, old lady. So. <laughs> in here go to the script and it is old lady so we're good do we want to wait now we should just go ahead and go to the next card so go to card seven and we're gonna wait again Go to card uh, Yeah, we're just gonna go through them eight Of course, I can't remember how many cards I had So let's let's just assume I've got ten easy enough to check on the first card second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth all right so there's ten cards um, there is something that will tell you about the card you're on yeah card number ten out of ten so you know if you can't you don't have to count through them you could just look at the card and figure out which one it is there's also a card ID. Everything has an ID, so think of like the resource ID. Um, you could refer to a card by ID number. We could also give the card a name and refer to it by name, or you could just say the tenth card. Anyway, so go back to the first script again. And we go to card 10. Wait for the speed X. Oh, I already have it doing that before I go to card one. All right. So let's give it a try, see how it looks. And I want to listen again to make sure that the sound plays. So. And there you have it. Um, there was something else I added. And this is something where I pulled art from the internet and placed it on um, uh, just, I really, I just opened the file, copied and pasted it here. And um, it's a little difficult to see, but this is the Apple Moon <laughs> kind of thing. I thought it would be kind of fun to add it in there. So um, let's grab this card, edit, copy card. Go to the last card, edit. paste okay and now this is the 11th card right because if we go to card info it's the 11th out the of the 11 cards go back to the first card so you can see we're we're building up this sequence um, But um, I'm sure um, 
you don't want this to just run through once. Um, you're going to want it to, uh, I think that was wolf, right? You're going to want it to repeat. So, and if you remember, repeat is the command for looping, and it's got several forms. But what we want to do is just let it repeat forever. You can actually put in the command repeat forever. Um, the, uh, yeah, did you find your uh, happy thought, your marbles? Okay, we don't want to do anything in the... So, what you want to do in here is repeat, but we don't want to repeat forever. You want to repeat until something. And one of the things you can do is you can actually listen for uh, keyboard events and HyperCard has built in several uh, keys that are predefined for you so that you don't have to find the key number or anything like that. So you can actually do a repeat until the shift key is down. Now, it only checks at the top of the loop. So when it's in the middle of doing all this stuff, it's not going to recognize that the shift key is down and exit the loop. Uh, there are other ways you could do that. Now, we don't want to go to the first card. We just want to repeat this. All right. Oh, end repeat, not repeat. And do, does anybody remember um, there was some pseudocode uh, that I learned a long time ago where it was if, uh, foo, and then phi instead of end if. So it was like invert or reverse the letters for stuff. It drove me nuts, that style of pseudocode. I, I'm sure somebody probably made an actual language out of it, but why? I guess that would be Python, right? Um, Python's crazy. I like it, but it's crazy. Um, that's something else I'd like to do too, is look at different programming environments. There is Python for the uh, 68K Mac. It's a very early version of Python. Um, doesn't do a whole lot. Um, but it'd be kind of interesting to look through the different, uh, you know, what did they try to do back then? Um, different languages and things. Um, I really want to do a Thinksy series eventually, but um, the hypercard one's going to take a while. Anyway, so now we got a repeat loop, and it'll check for uh, if the shift key is down. We added the wolf. So, um, card 10 is uh, wolf owl. Let's give it a try and see where we're at. Hit the browse tool, hit run. Scary pumpkin, flash. More scary pumpkin. <laughs> So this will just go on forever until you hold down the shift key and when it eventually gets to the top of the loop. It stops. Um, there is another way to stop hypercurd from executing, and I believe it's uh, command period. 
Don't quote me on that. I can't remember if it's command period. It's command something. This stack is creepy. Yeah. I think it's pretty creepy. Especially the graphics. <laughs> but it works. So, if you wanted to take the time to do it. Now, again, this is a very this is the crudest animation technique that you can use in HyperCard, right? So, let's go back into the script so I can show you what again uh, what we're doing here. You could you could pull in images from whatever, you know, like I did with the wolf. Um, you could take images and there's actually a website that does um, uh, Atkins dithering and you could feed images through that and get a dithered copy. Um, the, the GIF converter thing um, will do it. Yeah, you could do decent thunder. You could do, um, you could alternate images. So w one of the ways that uh, animation is done is that you have cards that have graphics on them that are set aside. You never visit the card. What you do is use the paint tools to go select the graphics and, and drop them on the card you're at. And then go grab graphics from a different card and drop it on there. So you can flip between different images. I, you know, I think the card navigation is easier, um, but you know, this is just one way of doing it. Uh, the best way I've seen of doing animation is um, the next easiest way to do it is, or, or rather, the next best way is to do uh, an icon. But you're limited to a um, you know a certain size image for an icon, and it's very easy to flip through the. Uh, the, the various uh, uh, cells of an icon. So that's one way you could do it. You could do, um, you could do animated uh, cursors. But again, very tiny image. Um, the best way I've seen to do it is you actually build a font and you do a large format font, a large point size font, and you create a frame for each letter. And then you use a field on your uh, card and run through the letters to do the animation. And that's something that I'm working on. Fantavision did animation. Yeah, there, you know, there's other tools, but this is one way of doing it in the HyperCard. So um, a lot of people did uh, stacks that did, well, think of, um, what is it, Manhole, the precursor to Mist. And then Mist itself was originally done in a hypercurd stack, um, heavily using external commands and, and code written in C, but you know, it's one way of doing it. Um, so anyway, so this very simply just card one controls the speed, you go from card to card, you repeat until the shift key is held down long enough to, to be able to quit. And then we did a really simple uh, message handler for handling uh, simulated lightning. So doing a flash. And that's basically it. So let's play around with it a little bit. Let's do one tick speed. So this is as fast as it really can run without commenting out the code. Um, so let's do this run. So that flash using the paint tools takes a little bit. But you, you know, you could run through it fairly fast if you wanted to do a lot of frames. Hold the shot. If you wanted to go a lot slower. Uh, I don't want to go too slow. Let's go um, 240. So that's four seconds. the shift key down so it doesn't cycle again. Actually, it's too command three. I think that worked. It stopped executing the script. Yeah, that worked. So command period is another way you could do that. But 
two seconds seems to be pretty good. Um, oh, yeah. Let's do this too. Run. So cheap instructions here. Uh, press and hold shift to stop. There. So, a little bit of instructions to it. Um, anyway, that that's it. That's that's how you build one of these. It's cheesier than all get out, but hey, it works. Uh, super breakout and hypercard. Yeah, you could do. Uh, there's actually a breakout stack I think already out there, or one similar. Somebody did, um, and if I remember right, uh, Hyper Talking did a uh, stream on this. No, Hyper Talking wrote it. Hyper Talking wrote a stack that does the helicopter dropping, you know, people into a wagon thing. Um, I forget what the name of the game is, and um, did it in HyperCard as an experiment to see how much he could do, and it actually is pretty darn good. Uh, um, oh, Gruz did it as one of his hypercard stack reviews and uh, it's very playable it requires a larger screen than a classic I think he said it had to be on a um, 68040 chip for it to be playable because it, it, it's so resource intensive but um, yeah so there's quite a bit you can do um, if you want to code uh, external commands using C, you can you can uh, speed things up quite a bit, but um, that's that's advanced programming stuff. Most hypercard stack uh, people just stick to hypercard. Uh, yeah, I showed that earlier. Inter Internet Archive, and let's let's go look. Let me switch uh, cameras here. Sorry. So if we go to, that's not it, that's my face. Here we go. Um, web browser. All right. Yeah, so if you go to the internet uh, archive, um, and you can filter on just the uh, hypercard stacks. So let's get rid of this. No, wrong keyboard again. Um, huh, there's a stack of a bunch of models. Anyway, um, gosh, there's stacks for just about anything. The Doors stack. So let's let's see what this is. 94 release of the Doors stack, a hypercard compendium of artwork, poetry, trivia, and information related to the music group. The the nice thing about uh, archive.org is they use the PCE um, uh, emulator. Yeah, the PCE Mac Plus emulator, so you can actually run the stacks to see what's in them. And uh, that way you don't have to download it and try it out. You could actually just run it in, in place. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult to use when you're using um, uh, external commands and things like that. I've, I've had some stacks not run well, but uh, it does take a bit to load. All right, so this started up. Sound is normally off. So it boots into a you know a Mac Plus simulator. Uh, you can do full screen. It's not the speediest emulator either. Well, it helps if you actually move the cursor. The cursor's not lined up properly. The doors. The poetry of Jim Morrison. Oh. So you can write stacks so that the uh, the menu is hidden. 
and that's something we should probably do on this stack so that when it runs on the, the classic it's not windowed or anything so find a song find an album find a song oh hit this build me a woman No, oh, it gives you the lyrics. Hmm. Of course, it doesn't play the actual music. Um, there are stacks that do that. Uh, let's see. Escape. So if we look for music, there's something to play music. Um, Music composition, music master, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So, music clip art, hypersound. I think that's, um, that might have been one of the stacks that uh, Gruz looked at. Sam Kennison. You want to hear Sam scream at you? Um, Blazing Saddles. All right. Let's check out Blazing Saddles. Funny sounds. If you're into the movie, you'll recognize them. Oh. Do I have sound monitoring on for the desktop? That's a good question. Probably don't. Nope, I don't. I'm not going to mess around with the config. But anyway, so you can go into these stacks and, and look for various things. Um, there are stacks for programming. Let's look at paper talk. So there's a hyper talk quick reference, there's an ebook, there's uh, a thing on different sorting algorithms. HyperCard has um, a really good hypertext kind of sorting um, mechanism built in for searching uh, for text and fields, things like that. So, um, but I'm sure people in have enhanced it. HyperCard Basics. So, anyway, there's thousands of stacks out there. Well, that pretty much just covers what I had. If anyone's got questions, uh, do I have yeah, interesting MacWorld HyperCard disk? Yeah, Mac eighty four you archived. Yeah, if you've come across stacks that aren't in archive.org, I really do encourage you to uh, upload them because um, you never know what you're going to find. Um, and I know of a, there's a stack that I know of. It's referred to in the literature in um, um, several references. It was at uh, Macworld. I don't remember which one, but it was in one of the Macworlds where, you know, HyperCard was everything. They were, it was really hyped up and everybody thought it was the, you know, best thing since sliced bread. Um, Novell had a hypercard stack that they used as a presentation to describe stuff. Um, you know, some of the stuff that they were doing, probably, uh, you know, the networking for the Mac or something. It's not the one I've been able to find. 
the the one I'm looking for has this animation on the screen in the beginning that is of a butterfly flapping and landing on the screen and I've only heard it described I've never seen it and I want that stack I want to see the animation they use the um, you know create a font that had you know was like I don't know 200 point or something like that in size and use that font to animate because what you could do is you could change the the frames as you go through the uh, as through the font and it's fairly fast and then you can actually move the field around on the screen so that you can move what you're doing in animation and you could have several fields that are done this way um, there is an animation stack that demonstrates this uh, and it's in archive.org but I have never been able to find a picture of or um, the actual stack itself it was made by a group that did hypermedia and they started a company um, unfortunately I think all the people that were involved in the development for it have, have died um, so I just can't find it it's not anywhere uh, University of Michigan has a extensive uh, um, FTP site that has uh, a ton of hypercard stacks it's not there I don't know maybe lost forever uh, I suppose I could try uh, contacting Novell <laughs> asking them but they probably go hyper what <laughs> you know but but hypercard yeah I agree hypercard's a neat program um, it can be a little frustrating to use when I started doing the stack originally um, instead of having the button hold all the code I thought oh I'm gonna have an uh, open card of handler on each card and it'll do whatever it needs to do that way you could shuffle the cards around however you want it, you know it doesn't matter what order they're in um, and then the all you do in the button is go to the second card and it'd take off from there and then the, when the second card was done doing its stuff it go to the third card it would just say go to next card in the card handler well it just happens that if you've got a message handler that executes a hypercard statement that then executes the same message handler you're actually doing recursion it may not seem like it but the handler is handling the same handler is handling the same handle you know it just you end up with a bunch of nested calls and um, I could not figure out why the stack wasn't working properly I had the sound resource in there and it wouldn't play the sound well come to find out I was just on the verge of having of getting a recursion error and it eventually did break and it said too much recursion not inside hypercard it was after it crashed and then the machine would lock up and I'd have to reboot and then go in and try to figure out where I where I had recursion it wasn't until I looked at my reference and looked at recursion that there was a single line sentence in the reference book that said oh yeah avoid having uh, you know an, uh, ha message handler call the same message handler that's handled in hypercard because it'll it'll do a recursive uh, um, thing and I'm like really great thanks for letting me know it wasn't me writing a function and it was the same function you know classic recursion it was the same code for the same event is a message handler so it was that kind of recursion um, are all hypercard stacks able to be edited and see the source yes uh, there are tools out there including other hypercard stacks that will break protection because there is a way to protect stacks um, you can protect a stack with a password so that you could sell the stack and then you provide the password when the person um, you know they paid for it you know that kind of protection there's ways of uh, in, kind of encrypting them and there's some built-in tools uh, there's some third-party tools that people wrote to help do that there's also a third-party tool someone wrote that breaks the stuff that the other third-party tool did so you can if you try hard enough 
and you find the right tools, break into them so you could get into the contents. Um, at the height of it, they were trying very hard to keep you from doing that. So, so there's the casual protection that's built into HyperCard, and then there's, there's other things. The best way to protect it is to put your logic and everything into an external command, and then you're just calling it. That way it's in a C uh, compiled library. Uh, the last version that was available to anyone was 2.4.1. There was a 3 that was being worked on. Steve Jobs killed it when he came back to Apple. Uh, Claris um, was selling HyperCard at the end, and um, it was no longer given away free. Um, and Steve Jobs really just didn't like it. Uh, I've heard anecdotally that whoever was working on it was somebody that had pissed him off. I don't know if that's the case, but um, either way, it, it when it first came out, I mean, it was a brilliant idea by Bill Atkinson, right? When it, in fact, he he thought of it on an LSD trip. Hey, you know, whatever works. Um, but to have that kind of an environment uh, at that time, I mean, there's been other things since then. Um, think about the web and how you do uh, web development. Um, but that environment at that time was somewhat revolutionary. There were things that were similar to it. Um, don't quote me on that. I don't remember the names. But there were efforts in different areas to do similar things. Um, but it was like the first time somebody had done something that was approachable from a super user or, or kids that were learning how to use computers. Um, you think about Logo. It was one of those environments where people, they, under, they started to understand logic and how to control the turtle and things like that. HyperCard was the same way. You could get in there and author stuff without writing any code. In fact, the environment would help you, like that button that was added for you so you could play a sound. It would do a lot of things. Um, but it, I, I was really impressed with the environment when I, I first, first time I used a Macintosh was the Macintosh Plus. And, um, you know, you remember Windows 1.0 came out about the same time. And <laughs> Windows 1.0 was a joke. Everybody knows. Um... And the Macintosh was like, oh my God, it just works. Oh my God, what you see on the screen is what you get when you print it. You know, remember, WordStar was the popular word processing program at the time everybody was using. And, you know, fiddling around with the fonts, you'd print it out to see how it came out. Because what you saw on the screen is not what you got when you printed it. Um, anyway. Roger Wagner's Hyper Studio. I don't know. I know that there were um, other HyperCard successors that were developed. Um, there's a current one that's available now. I can't remember the name of it. And um, I've looked into it briefly, but they've kind of gone commercial. It's not really an open source thing anymore. Um, so I'm not really interested in that. Uh, besides, I'm, I'm having too much fun reliving my past. Um, I'm, uh, what else do we have? Is there any way to tell what version of HyperCard a stack requires? Hmm. Yeah, because when you jumped from version 1 to version 2, uh, there's a really cool stack that was released with 1 that is a train and you lay the track and you can change where the track goes and the train will just follow the track. So it's broken up into cells and it's Bill Atkinson wrote it, I think. And it's, it's a really good demonstration of how you can build like an erector set for people to do things. Um, I think someone suggested it could be taken and you could change it into, um, the pieces of track or electronic components and then you could have how they're connected be the circuit 
and you could have the logic in each piece of track execute, uh, you know, do whatever that component does. So um, you could have uh, a lab view kind of um, environment where you could wire things together. In fact, um, I did a symposium when I was in college as part of a directed study I was doing my senior year where I did a uh, graphical programming language, kind of like LabVIEW, where you would take components and just wire them together to perform functions and things so you could build on it. And um, I built it in HyperCard. Uh, don't have any of it, don't have the paper I wrote that goes with it, all that stuff got lost, but um, it was it was a really fun environment to work in. I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, sorry. Catch up with the chat. Uh, there should, <laughs> they should have given LSD to Steve Jobs. You know, people react differently to LSD, I hear. So, maybe he took LSD and thought he should slash and burn things. I, who knows? I mean, I have a lot of respect for Steve Jobs. I mean, he was he was definitely a brilliant person. So was Waz. Um, from what I understand, one of the successes of the Apple, the original Apple, was him being able to do a drive controller with just a few chips instead of the normal, you know, big array of a bunch of chips. So, um, you know, we owe a lot to them for what they did. Uh, people like Bill Atkinson... Um, Ron did a video where he covered the the book that talked about um, oh I can't remember there the website that's got um, folklore.org I think is is what it is and there's a the book covers the different stories that are in there um, there's a great story about how Steve Jobs wanted rounded boxes and the original design and code that um, was being worked on had square boxes. Um, the, uh, in the algorithm that he had to come up with to do the rounded corners, um, in, in assembly, um, you know, the, the stock solution that everybody was using was kind of inefficient and, you know, it took him a few days and a lot of skull sweat, but he came back and wrote something that would create rounded corners for, for the boxes that was more efficient than the square box algorithm. So uh, amazing to me, you know, especially for a programmer who is average, you know, I'm, I'm not anyone's gift to programming in any sense of the word. I did data over forms for most of my career, business applications. I did a couple of things um, that were kind of interesting in the early web days. Um, I wrote a, um, come to find out it was a lot like uh, Java, um, um, oh, what do you call it? I can't remember what it's called now, but I did something that was a templating engine inside HTML using JavaScript, or no, PHP. Yes, PHP that um, used a regular expression to parse um, XML or HTML, if you will, um, so that you could do an extended language inside of it. Uh, Java tags, I think they were called. Um, and you could have tags that would do looping and other different uh, language functions so that you could create a, a web page template that would grab the data and do things like create a table and and you could program your um, web page using a template in HTML and then it would execute, it would interpret it and then um, I actually had it output um, code so it was a code generator so it would run faster and so anyway it was it was a really fun project and it was just something that I threw together because I felt like it. Um, I, unfortunately, I worked for a company that was all Microsoft Stack, and they wouldn't even consider it or do anything with it. Uh, it was all just ASP. We didn't even have ASPX yet. We were doing uh, VB script behind um, HTML pages using ASP 
pages at the time. And I was like, PHP, Linux, free. We don't have to, and they, they didn't want to go there. Um, anyway, fun times. So I, I hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to sign off now because I'm getting hungry and I'm thirsty. And I'm sure you guys are bored listening to me talk. So <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming. Um, I totally forgot to play the intro when I started. Um, I did the countdown thing. I am going to attempt to play the outro now. So thanks everybody for coming and uh, see you on the next video.